Hi everybody, it's 314 React here, and today we're going to be looking at Doom Eternal. Now today, the new RTX and DLSS update has dropped. It's about 4.1 gigabytes on Steam, and I'm just going to be looking at some of the differences and performance. So if we have a look at the settings I'm using, everything's on Ultra Nightmare, HDR's off, we've got ray tracing on, and DLSS at quality. So let's dive into a level. Super Gore Nest seems to be the best demonstration here, so let's dive in there. So I chose this level because it has a lot of blood on it, and this DLSS update seems to be mainly, if not only, around reflections. So in this area where we would have a cube map, or a SSR, or mix of both, you now have fully ray traced reflections. Perspective correct, very pixel accurate, really high resolution stuff, really looks great. You can also see the reflection of the Doom Slayer there in the blood. In Windows you can see reflections of the Doom Slayer, again, all really perspective correct stuff. And even the reflection is morphed around the little imperfections in the window there. Which is really, really cool. And even if you put a bullet hole in, you can see the reflection being warped around that bullet hole. Really nice stuff. Really dynamic, really beautiful. So if we turn ray tracing off, you can see the reflection is all but gone. Uh, there's SSR there that disappears off the screen. And you've got a few other things there, like some lights being reflected and other specular stuff. Maybe a bit of cube mapping, you can see there, which looks pretty hideous, really. And I think some of that is reinforced with a bit of SSI, you can see there, as it goes off the screen. So I think that's the main takeaway from this, so let's move forward. You're not really going to see much uh, global illumination or any form of massive pipeline change like in Metro Exodus. It's just mainly around the reflections. I think they didn't want to put in a full ray tracing pipeline because they didn't want to impact the frame rate too much. As you can see here again, cube mapped. And then we turn the ray tracing back on. There you go, fully ray traced image. Nothing disappears off screen. Everything looks really beautiful and accurate. Really, really cool. Adds a little bit more of depth to the world. And the frame rate, as you can see there, with DLSS on quality, is about 130 frames a second. So let's dive into this combat heavy area. See, the frame rate is still over 100, hasn't dropped yet. And of course, looks really beautiful with that DLSS on. It's another game where it basically looks like super sampling with quality DLSS on. And what we'll do is we'll switch over and we'll turn DLSS off. And we're down to about 88 frames. And the image quality just doesn't look as good at all. Oh boy. So let's turn the ray tracing off and see what the frame rate's like. The frame rate goes up to 130 there, so with DLSS off, the ray tracing uses about 50 odd frames. Pretty consistent with the frame rate. So. And then when you turn ray tracing back on, you'll also notice the VRAM there jumps up by about 1.1 gigs. And then when you put DLSS on, it takes that down by a couple hundred megs. So DLSS looks better, runs better, and uses less VRAM, which if you're running at the edge of uh, 2080 with eight gigs of VRAM, that's really gonna help out. So let's just put the ray tracing on with DLSS on quality. And we're back up to 110 frames. So we're getting about 130 there without ray tracing or DLSS. And turning ray tracing on and then putting DLSS on, we're only losing about 20 frames. So that's 20 frames for basically much improved image quality to the point where it's starting to look like super sampling. On top of having really nice reflections. Right, so I've just turned on some cheats and wiped out this whole area. And you can see the real example of the reflections here. Reflecting the entire level behind you, as well as the character. Now these reflections go quite far, because you can go all the way over here. And you can still see the reflection of the level. If you go to this bit, 
you can still see the Doom Slayer being reflected there. So that's really good. That's like the reflections in Watch Dogs. And also, you can get really cool effects like this with the curved glass, where the reflection curves around the glass and is also compressed a bit, just like you'd see with a real uh, reflection going over that sort of curvature, which just looks amazing. It's really gorgeous, really cool, and probably isn't that easy without ray tracing. There's also a double reflection there. Really good stuff, really high res, beautiful stuff. Now, this reminds me of the reflective bit in the window in Doom 3, but that was probably using a planar, uh, which you can only do over flat surfaces. You wouldn't be able to get this sort of curved surface here, or the reflections through broken glass effect. So, this is where the ray tracing really comes into its own. And when there's loads of blood around, like I say, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you look at this area here, and we turn the DLSS off, you see it still looks damn good, but there's a little bit of extra aliasing around the windows up there. The edges of the gun don't look quite as sharp. Certain textures just don't look as good. Uh, it just The image quality just isn't quite up there. Whereas if you crank it up to performance, you're getting 150 frames a second with ray tracing on. Looks really good. And then you crank it up to quality again. And again, you're basically getting up to super sampled levels of quality or DSR levels of quality. But with a whole extra load of frames on top of that. So there's no real reason not to have DLSS on if you can. These reflections here, again, just look awesome. Now, if you really want to go crazy and push those frames up, you can turn DLSS to performance and ray tracing off, and you're up to 200 frames a second. Now, we're running with a 3090 here, so I'm wondering, let's crank everything else down and see how high we can get that frame rate to go with performance DLSS on. So that means everything down to off, everything down to low. Apply, turn off all that. 200 frames a second. So I imagine there's some CPU limitation there. And the game still looks fairly alright. Yeah, 250 frames a second. I imagine that's my CPU, my Core i7 holding it back there. But that's a pretty smooth frame rate. So yeah, if you really, if you really want the highest possible frame rate, you can crank everything down. And this here, this cube map, really shows off what that reflection is like without ray tracing. It's not really a reflection, it's just a horrible low-res cube map that doesn't scale. Not perspective correct. Same with the blood here. It's all just cube mapped. Some of it reinforced with a bit of SSR. Let's crank everything back up again. I was hoping to get to a thousand frames a second there, but yeah, I think I'm CPU limited. So when you turn the ray tracing off, yeah, the VRAM is about 7.5 gigs. So if you had a uh, 2080, 8 gigs, you'd be okay there. Then you turn it on, you're over allocating 8.6 gigs. Then you can help that out with DLSS. So DLSS is also a good memory saver. So here we are. Everything back to ray traced. Absolutely beautiful. His reflections are just awesome. Again, perspective correct, pretty pixel accurate, a little bit blurry, maybe probably rendered at half res or something like that. But again, I think that's just to keep that performance way up. Best example is this part here. If you turn ray tracing off, horrible cube map there that doesn't even match what's above it. And then the SSR starts to kick in and blend in with it. But again, it just doesn't look very good. It's all a bit messy. Ray tracing back on and there we go. Beautiful. So this is where you're really going to see a difference in the bloody reflection areas and in some water effects as well. Again, the reflection being like moved and refracted and uh, morphed by the pattern of the blood there. And you can still see there's some aliasing in the reflections there. So let's turn DLSS off. And yeah, it looks a little bit worse. In fact, it definitely looks worse around these parts. You can still see definite aliasing there. It's basically no anti-aliasing being applied to that bit of... Uh, specular kind of reflection there. Crank DLSS back on. Hmm. Still doesn't affect that either. Oh no, smooth it out a little bit. So yeah, DLSS smooths out even the specular stuff. Not quite as much as I'd hope it would, but it still smooths it out. So the more detailed reflections of the ray tracing work nicely with DLSS there. Not only in terms of performance, but in terms of cleaning up those more detailed reflections. A bit of like glass there, with some nice refraction going through it. That's really cool. That's almost like the thick glass kind of refraction that you get in Quake 2 RTX. That's really nice. Look how it like, moves the image, magnifies some bits, zooms out some other bits in the reflection. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. That's really cool. And even in these bits here. So this is where you really couldn't do planar or anything like that because it's a curved surface. Again. That is awesome. And again, that uh, bullet hole seems to deform the reflection as well. 
And here we go, another area with a really cool windowed area. Looks absolutely awesome. Really cool. Perfect reflection. Except the shader effect on the stunned enemies doesn't appear to be there, but other than that. See, what's awesome here is you can actually see what's coming behind you in certain areas. And see what's going on behind you. It seems to reduce the quality. As you can see there, there's like parts of meshes missing. Again, that'll be an optimization to keep that frame rate nice and high. And here we go, more cracked glass where the reflection is being morphed by it. So the Doom Slayer's mesh always seems to be really well rendered. I've tried to get reflections in reflections, but it's really hard to find an area where there's like two mirrors. I imagine it's like Battlefield 5 where they limit it to just one reflection depth. As the blood goes down, you've got the reflection being refracted and changed by the blood there. And most of the frame rate that you lose is regained by putting the DLSS back up, especially to performance mode. So if we look here, we've got 120 frames, turn the ray tracing off, and the DLSS off. We've got 140 frames, turn the ray tracing on, you're down to 90 frames. So that's about 50 frames off. And then if you put DLSS on to performance, you're back up to 140 frames. So you can turn on the ray tracing, turn on DLSS to performance, and you'll be at the same frame rate as what you had when the game was running without ray tracing and no DLSS. And performance mode DLSS is still pretty damn good. You're not going to notice it too much. Yeah. So you've got ray tracing for free, basically, there. Yeah, exactly the same frame rate. And then if you just want to make the image quality perfect, you turn it up to quality. And there we go, down to 120. And even with DLSS off, it still runs pretty nicely. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't run as smoothly. But, oh, look at that. The Doom Slayer's reflection in the uh, pickup there. That's awesome. And, like, the world reflected around it. And in the little bit there, transparency as well. It's awesome. Really brings me back to like the Quake 3 ray tracing thing they had about 20 years ago where they were ray tracing it on like loads of Pentium 4s or something. So yeah, other levels are pretty much the same story. It's mainly the shiny floors and where there's lots and lots of blood and gore that you really get that best effect of the ray tracing. It's not like revolutionary like Metro Exodus is, but I imagine they just didn't want to take out the frame rate. And even if you don't want to use the ray tracing, which you can basically get for free with performance DSS, you can still crank the DSS up to quality and get a better image quality than what you are getting before with a better frame rate on top of that. So that's really awesome. It's kind of a win-win scenario. It may run on AMD as well. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments. But I'm not sure how well the ray tracing would run on AMD or if the DLSS would run at all on AMD. I'm going to give it a go on my laptop, which has a 3060 in it, to see how the performance is on that. That'll be interesting to see. I imagine it'll still be very performant. Because this game is super optimized anyway. And now it's just even more so. God, that's good. So yeah, that's that, that. I just want to make a quick video going over the changes of ray tracing. And the performance of it. VRAM usage. And just to see how it affected it. Hopefully in the future they can release maybe Doom Eternal Enhanced. Much like Metro Exodus did. And ray trace the entire thing. In a couple of years where hardware is a bit more powerful. They can probably put full global illumination in and everything like that and just do a whole ray trace pipeline. Yeah, imagine Metro Exodus, full ray trace lighting, but in Doom Eternal and running at a really high frame rate. And with something like DLS 3, which will make it look even better. That'd be crazy. So yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Grab it on Steam now. I think it's also on PS5 and Xbox One X, which should give you some ray tracing reflections as well. I imagine they won't look quite as good as this, but they will still look awesome. So thanks for watching, I hope everyone's staying safe, and I'll see you in the next video.